My name is Travis Blaylock. I'm a senior at Utah State University studying mechanical engineering with a minor in electrical engineering. Hi, my name is Nathan Brinkerhoff. I'm a junior at Utah State University and I'm studying electrical engineering. Our project that we decided to do for microcontroller hardware and software is creating a keypad door lock. A keypad door lock is a lock that is controlled by a keypad and can be unlocked using a code. When the door is unlocked, the user can make the choice to lock the door or change the code used to unlock the door. When the door is locked, the user can input the code to unlock the door. If the code inputted is incorrect, the door will remain locked and an alarm will go off. This project requires the use of a keypad, a step motor, a buzzer, an LCD, and a microcontroller. The microcontroller used for this project is a Nucleo L476RG ARM Cortex. The keypad is one of the most essential parts of this project. Without a reliable keypad, the user may be locked out forever. This would be a very bad outcome indeed. The keypad utilizes seven GPIO pins, four for the rows and three for the columns. The keypad initialize function configures the row pins to output mode and the column pins to input mode. It is important to note that the current in the columns must not exceed 20 milliamps. So a resistor must be added between the power supply and the keypad to ensure that that doesn't happen. The pins are configured so that Pup Doctor is in pull down mode and the O-Typer is configured to open drain. This will protect the board from a shorting scenario in which two buttons on different rows are pushed simultaneously. The debouncer is also needed so that the board can accurately read a single key press. Without such a debouncer, the user would have a hard time inputting a password that consists of different numbers. The step motor is what we used as the locking mechanism for this project. The most advantageous characteristic of this type of motor was how precise we could control its revolutions. This allowed us to have a lock which could turn 90 degrees clockwise and cl counterclockwise with a great degree of accuracy. For our product to be viable, it was important that the lock could be opened and closed hundreds of times and could be trusted to return to a strong lock state. Any deviation could result in an unreliable product. The purpose of the LCD is to display instructions for the user and allow the user to see the numbers they are typing in. The LCD will display the instructions on the first line and show the user input on the second line. As the user enters in a code, the LCD will update in real time showing the code entered in. The functions used with the LCD code in this project are LCD init, LCD clear, LCD write com, LCD write data, and LCD display string. LCD init sets up the LCD to be used for the lock system. LCD Clear is used to remove all characters displayed on the LCD to allow for new instructions to be displayed. LCD Write Com instructs the LCD on where to write each character. LCD Write Data instructs the LCD on what character to write. Both LCD Write Com and LCD Write Data are used in the function LCD Display String, which prints character strings onto the LCD. The purpose of the buzzer is to notify the user when an incorrect code has been entered. If the wrong code has been entered by the user, the buzzer will sound and prevent the user from retrying for the duration of the buzzer. The functions used with the buzzer's code in this project are the buzzer init and the run buzzer functions. The run buzzer function creates a square waveform that causes a membrane inside the buzzer to vibrate and creates a noise. The run buzzer function is only used when a wrong code was inputted by the user. One problem we ran into with this project was some mistakes with wiring. As we were setting up the microcontroller and connecting hardware to it, we made mistakes in our wiring which caused the hardware to not work. This incorrect wiring caused plenty of confusion and frustration for us as we were working on our project, but once the wiring was fixed, our hardware worked perfectly. 
So let's take a look at the code that brings these components together. With the clock enabled and hardware initialized, the device begins in an unlocked state with a default password of 3710. Much like a lock bot at the store, a default password is given to the user. From there, the user has the option to change the password by pushing star, then typing in the new password. Once the user is satisfied with their password, they can then put the device into a locked state by pushing the hashtag button. From there, the user can attempt to unlock the device. A wrong input is met with an incorrect error message on the LCD and a noise from the buzzer. With a little help from Travis's mechanical engineering know-how, we were able to transform this barn toy into a little lockbox. It was great to be able to apply all the different things we learned over the semester to create something new. We certainly came a long way from flipping bits in assembly. If you wish to take a closer look at our code, please check the link in the description. We will also add the user manuals for the devices that would help make this project possible. From this project, we learned that integrating many parts is more difficult than integrating a single part to a microcontroller. But integrating all these different parts together can provide a lot more utility to the end user.